it most certainly has put Prattland on the map again in, in a very positive way. And um, I'd also like to thank uh, HR uh, Director Lisa Thrash for redeveloping. Uh, don't go anywhere yet. Because <laughs> um, this is the rest of the part of it. Um, on February the 9th, Chief Brown celebrated 30 years of service with the Prattville Fire Department. And uh, if he'll come up, since he's, uh, I think he might be the oldest one here in the room tonight. <laughs> If you exclude <laughs> Albert and myself, but uh, <laughs> oh yeah, Chief Chief Thompson. Okay, oh, oh, got some more over here. I see hands coming up. Um, thank you for your dedication to the city, uh, your leadership that you have provided, and um, I would pin this on you, but it only had a little short you pin on it. I want daggers. a long one on there. But um, HR has. Uh, revitalized our, our recognizing our city employees as we all know is a very important portion of our uh, of this municipality because you have to have people and you got to have equipment you got to have leadership and um, so thank you and uh, thank you look forward to working it. with you for many many years to come thank you mayor thank you thank and you. you would would you like to say anything well I just it's like I told them at the chief's conference I was taken back by it and I'm truly honored by it but and I go, you've always heard me say this, uh, a good leader that's recognized means it has a great department and great people. And I have that and the support of great department heads. Uh, and it's just like I told uh, that body of individuals that it takes a council and a mayor giving us the tools and the talent, like the mayor says, and the funding to carry out the safety of our citizens. So it's been a great career. I hope there's much more, much more time. My wife, I tell you, nobody's enjoyed a job more than I have. Uh, I truly love this city. And uh, y'all keep doing what you're doing because you're really pushing us in the right way. So is this group of department heads and this leader of ours right here. So thank you so much. Thank you. If we can, I have one quick yeah. photo. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Rest easy, everybody. He lives just outside the city limits, so he cannot run for elected office inside <laughs> the city limits. Oh, and, and moving right on along, um, if you have time, stop by the uh, mayor's office. We have some of the new brochures out from our Parks and Recs. It talks about spring. Uh, I'll be glad when spring really does get here, but has quite a few different um, uh, things going on inside of our city there. Uh, opening night, one of those items is actually opening night for Way Off Broadway, uh, performance of uh, To Kill a Mockingbird is this Thursday evening. This is one you won't want to miss. Please check our website for tickets. Um, Mardi Gras, I've heard somebody say before, Prattville likes to have their parades. So uh, this Saturday, February the 11th, festivities beginning downtown at 11 a.m. The parade begins at 2. Hope to see everybody there. Prattville is participating in the state severe weather preparedness sales tax holiday weekend, which is February the 24th through the 26th. Please check our city website for the list of tax exempt items and other resources. You know, I want to commend the Parks and Recs Committee and this council, along with the previous council body, who helped create a revenue stream and the management thereof, which continues to be beneficial not only to our citizens, but also to the Prattville Junior High School students and programs our hotel owners, shops, and eateries. With the project before you, you are authorized the completion of phase one of this very important improvements of parks programs and the quality of life of its residents. Shortly after that, hopefully phase two should be begin on the heels of the completion of phase one due to the good stewardship of lodging fees and their funding. So I wanna thank this council and um, look forward to working with you guys on projects like this one and so many others in the future. Mr. President, end of my report. Thank you, sir. Any questions of the mayor? Thank you. Thank you. This time we'll move into a report from the Council on Special Committees. Councillor Jackson. Councillor Brown. No, sir. Councillor Starnes. No, sir. Councillor Cables. No, sir. Councillor Stritchett. Yes, sir. On uh, Friday, January the 27th, we had a uh, fire committee meeting, which was attended by uh, Councillor Starnes, Cables, and myself, also attended by uh, Alabama Fire Chief of the Year, Chief Brown. 
And I'm from the clerk's office, Kathy Dickerson. Finance, Dan Oakley. From the mayor's staff, Lisa Byer, Lisa Bird, I'm sorry, Lisa Bird. And several of the chief's um, department head and some of his leadership uh, people were there as well. Um, we, we discussed their five-year strategic plan, uh, IS overview updates, building department updates were discussed about yearly building inspections, the biggest need for vehicles that they have, um, training update, um, we were to host the original fire college, uh, the need for a classroom, and for other municipalities to help pay for some of it by uh, attending the fire college. Uh, we also talked about fire prevention and public education, inspections, fire investigations, and their immediate needs. Um, drive and rescue recovery team. Uh, it does have 20 of our members from the fire department who are on it. They're also uh, provided a new boat with a water sonar, a 21-foot uh, boat, which I believe was donated along with the motor. So that's good for our budget and the fire department. Um, needs for the future station out on Old Ridge Road, fire station number four, and uh, where we're headed with that currently. Also, uh, we'll need to replace, I believe, some vehicles, one for every three years, um, emergency response vehicles. And also, adding staffing, fire EMTs, two per year for the next three years is, is on, on the wish list as well. And um, it was a great meeting, we went about an hour and a half, very informative, and uh, Chief Brown and his staff have done a fantastic job. And that's it from the meeting. Thank you. Councillor Boone. Yes. The Wastewater Committee met January the 25th at the City Annex. Two years ago, our finance director recommended the city should go to the bond market and borrow all the funds for phase one of the Pine Creek upgrade at that time. We realized the construction period would probably span 24 to 36 months meaning we would likely have four to six semi-annual bond payments, even though our pricing model for the wastewater services would not be fully implemented until after the construction is projected to be completed. Since our initiation of this project, we have seen interest rates increase and bids for other city-related construction projects exceed their engineering projections. This project also includes a portion of green construction. A specific financing entity allows for a percentage of debt forgiveness on green projects if their financing services are utilized. With these changes in events, the committee felt we needed professional assistance to execute our fiduciary responsibility concerning the financing of this project. Mr. Rush Rice and Mr. Chris Williams of Rice Advisory LLC were presented were present to inform the committee of their services. The background information on phase one had been previously provided to them. At the conclusion of their presentation, Mr. Rice and Mr. Williams suggested that depending upon the current market rates, there may be other more cost effective options than borrowing all the funds at one time. At this time, we have an opportunity to construct a consent agenda. We have seven resolutions for your consideration. The first, a res resolution to appoint Jerry Crosby as a member of the Board of Zoning Adjustment. Resolution number two, to appoint Neil Parker as a supernumerary member of the Board of Zoning Adjustment. Resolution number three, to reappoint Leo Jamison as a member of the Board of Zoning Adjustment. Resolution number four, to reappoint Michael Whaley as a supernumerary member of the Board of Zoning Adjustment. Resolution number five, to reject all bids number 016-018A for additions and improvements to Mac Gray Park. Resolution number six, to declare various weeded lots to be a public nuisance, order their abatement and set a public hearing per Title 1167 of the Code of Alabama 1975 as amended. Resolution number seven, to surplus one boat, motor, and trailer 
from the fire department. Resolution number eight to surplus one vehicle from the police department. This time the chair will entertain a motion to move these resolutions to a consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion concerning these items? Um, chair will entertain a vote. All those in favor of adoption of this consent agenda, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed by like sign. Now that this agenda has been properly provided before us, Chair will entertain a motion for the adoption of the consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we will vote. All those in favor of adoption of the consent agenda, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed by like sign, the consent agenda is adopted. We move into our regular agenda. Resolution number one, to amend the physical year 2017 budget to enter into a contract for additions and improvements to Mac Ray Park to Clement Contracting Group Incorporated for the Parks and Recreation Department at a cost not to exceed $803,538. Councilor Boone, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas the City of Prattville Parks and Recreation Department has a need for additions and improvements to Mac Gray Park, and whereas a bid invitation for said additions and improvements was let in bid number 016-018A and one sealed bid was received, open and read on December the 13th, 2016 from Clement Contracting Group Incorporated, and whereas the bid was in excess of funds available for said project, and whereas an Attorney General's opinion dated December 13th, 1973 states that when only one bidder responds to the invitation to bid, a municipality may reject the bid and negotiate the purchase or contract provided that the negotiated price is lower than the bid price. And whereas the City Council rejected bid number 016-018A in Resolution Book 2017, and whereas the Parks and Recreation and Engineering Departments have negotiated said project with Clement Clement Contracting Group, Incorporated, and the negotiated cost of $803,538 is lower than the bid price. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that fiscal year 2017 capital projects fund reserves is hereby reduced by $803,538, and that budget line item fiscal year 2017 capital projects fund Matt Gray Park improvements is hereby increased by $803,538. Be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that Mayor Bill Gillespie, Jr., is authorized to enter into a contract with Clement Construction Group for said improvements and to execute any and all documents necessary to have this work performed for and on behalf of the City of Prattville. Be it further resolved that the City Council of the City of Prattville that funds in an amount not to exceed $803,538 are hereby authorized and approved to be paid to Clement Contracting Group Incorporated for said improvements to Matt Gray Park and said funds are approved and appropriated from fiscal year 2017 budget line item capital projects fund slash Matt Gray Park improvements. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Yeah, I have a question real quick. When, uh, when are we looking to start? Any other relevant questions? This time we will vote. All those in favor of adopting resolution number one, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed by like sign, motion carried. Resolution number two, to amend the FY 2017 budget to release funds for the purchase of six light structure green system lights through the NJPA Purchasing Cooperative from Musco Sports Lighting LLC for the Matt Gray Park Improvement Project for the Parks and Recreation Department at a cost of $107,100. Councilor Boone, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas there is a need for six light structure green systems, lights for the Matt Gray Park Improvement Project for the Parks and Recreation Department, and whereas said lights are available through the NJPA Purchasing Co-op contract number 082114-MSL from Musco Sports Lighting, LLC, at a cost of 107 
$107,100. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the lodging fee reserves are hereby decreased by $107,100 and that fiscal year 2017 budget line item <coughs> capital project slash Matt Gray improvements is hereby increased by $107,100. Be it further resolved that the City Council of the City of Prattville that funds in the amount of $107,100 are hereby authorized and approved to be paid to Musco Sports Lighting LLC and said funds are approved and appropriated from fiscal year 2017 budget line item capital <coughs> projects fund slash Matt Gray Park improvements. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion on this resolution? All those in favor of this resolution signify by raising your right hand. All opposed by like sign, motion carried. Resolution number three, to authorize the mayor to enter into a professional services agreement with Rice Advisory LLC for financial advisory services for phase one of the Pine Creek and Otago Creek Clean Water Facilities Expansion and Improvement Project. Councilor Brown, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas the City Council has determined that the Pine Creek and Otago Creek clean water facilities require expansion and operational improvements in order to meet the continued growth and development in the city. And whereas said wastewater department expansion and improvements will be a multi-year project. And whereas the City Council has identified a need for financial advisory services during this expansion project. And whereas the City of Prattville desires to enter into an agreement with Rice Advisory LLC to provide said financial advisory services. And whereas compensation for said advisory services shall be budgeted from the Wastewater Enterprise Fund during the term of the expansion project on a per transaction fee in respect to the issuance of bonds, notes or other debt of the city with a total per transaction fee cap or at an hourly rate for specified financing transactions of the city. And whereas said agreement shall be in effect for a term not to exceed three years and may be extended for one year term or on a month to month basis at the option of the city during the course of the expansion project. And whereas section 41-16-51A3 Code of Alabama 1975 is amended allows contracts to secure services with consultants possessing a high degree of professional skill to be let without competitive bidding. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that the mayor is authorized to enter into a professional services agreement with Rice Advisory LLC for said financial advisory services for the wastewater department and that the mayor is hereby authorized to sign any and all documents necessary to execute said agreement. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed by a like sign. <coughs> Motion carried. Resolution number four, to authorize the mayor to sign an engagement letter for agreed upon procedures with Warren Averett at a cost not to exceed $16,000. Councilor Stritchett, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas the city of Prattwell has have a personal change in the position of finance director and whereas it is customary to conduct an audit of the in interim period in which such a change occurs and whereas Warren Everett has the expertise to provide said audit services at a cost not to exceed $16,000 and whereas section 41-16-51A3 Code of Alabama 1975 as amended allows contracts to secure services with consultants possessing a high degree of professional skill, including certified public accountants, to be let without competitive bidding. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Prattville hereby authorizes the mayor to sign an engagement letter for agreed-upon services with Warren Everett at a cost not to exceed 16000 and that said funds are approved and appropriate, appropriated in the fiscal 2017 budget from various city departments adopted this day, 7th day of February 2017. So moved, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion concerning this resolution? All those in favor of adopting this resolution signify by raising your right hand. All opposed by a like sign. Resolution is carried. Resolution number five, to set a public hearing to rezone property located at Rice Park Circle from FAR 
to T-2. Councilor Cables, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. <coughs> Whereas Jerry W. Rice and Susan D. Rice, William S. Rice, William A. Flowers, Nelda F. Sorrells, and Angela G. Flowers are the owners of the property described in Attachment A and shown in Attachment B. And whereas the property to be rezoned is located inside the city limits at Rice Park Circle. And whereas the petitioners wish to rezone the property from FAR, which is Forest Agriculture and Recreation, to T2 Mobile Home Parking Area. And whereas a public hearing on the proposed rezoning was held by the Prattville Planning Commission on January 19th, 2017, and whereas the City of Prattville Planning Commission did recommend the rezoning of said property be amended as described in Attachment A and Attachment B from FAR to T2 Mobile Home Parking Area. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that a public hearing is set for March 7, 2017 at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers at City Hall. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion on this matter? All those in favor of adopting this resolution signify by raising your right hand. All opposed by like sign. Resolution is carried. Would you introduce the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama, as follows that the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville, Alabama, adopted on February 10th, 1950 subsequently amended from time to time and the zoning map adopted on the first day of may 1987 are hereby amended to reclassify the property described in attachment a and displayed in attachment b from far to 2t t2 excuse me mobile home parking area and that this proposed ordinance was advertised for two weeks in the prattville progress a newspaper of general circulation within the city limits of the city of prattville and that the City Council of the City of Prattville at its public hearing on the 7th day of March 2017 at 6 p.m. considered said proposed ordinance and that at such time and place all persons who desire had an opportunity to be heard in favor of or in opposition to such ordinance. All other items and provisions of the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville not herein specific, specifically amended shall remain in full force and effect. The amendments herein contained were considered and approved by the City of Prattville Planning Commission on January 19, 2017. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and execution as provided by law. Adopted the 7th day of February 2017. Mr. President. Thank you. Ordinance being of permanent nature must be held for two weeks. And so it will be reviewed at our next regular meeting. Mr. Yes. On the ordinance. Chair Wiltane, we need to move that we adopt. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. We need a second. We have a second. We have a second. Thank you. It will still be held for two weeks. Thank you. At this time, that concludes our agenda is presented we will entertain comments from questions comments from those present yes ma'am please come to the forward to the podium and give your name and address for the clerk i'm cj martin and i'm bob martin <clears throat> Just want to say that the Cook Wainwright House has been nominated as one of Alabama's places of peril for 2017 by my, uh, Michael Panhorst, who is with the State Preservation Historical Home Committee. Um, immediate intervention is needed to protect, protect these old home structures, each of which, which is important to our state history. This old house is historically significant and faces an urgent threat to being demolished. We have um, gotten approval for, well, first there was approval for demolition by the Historic Preservation Committee on 6-9 of 2016. When we found out about that, we 
got a certificate, obtained a certificate of appropriateness uh, to have the house moved from the residential area where it sits to the commercial area behind the courthouse on 1215. On, um, after that, we were told we needed to apply for a permit. We cleared the landline. We hired a bridge engineer who we also hired a contracted a builder to assess the foundation that would be needed. We obtained permits that the city told us we needed. We hired a fencing contractor to remove the fence existing and put it back after the house was moved um, to prepare for the move. We have hired the moving contractor and um, consulted with him, and we have answered many questions that were posed to us by adequately, I believe, by the council. So we are here to address the city council this evening on how we can work together to preserve the structure. The move will actually be 587 yards. The move will take about an hour to load and 15 minutes to actually move it that 587 yards. So we hope we can work with you. Thank you. Um, I, th I think in speaking to each of the individual members of the council, no one has said that they are opposed to trying to save this structure. As far as we've been able to determine, it's the last standing dwelling that Daniel Park Pratt had a part in building. I believe Ms. Wainwright was his niece, and when she married Mr. Wainwright, that the house is named for, he built this home for them, and in the intervening since 1857, my math's off tonight, 100 and some odd years, it's been added on to about six times. And the later additions, of course, were not heart pine, you know, timbers, virgin forest type wood. So the wood was inferior, they've sagged, they've settled, they've rotted. So that's why when Dr. Miller bought the property, he had people look at trying to restore the home to live in it and the cost was astronomical. So the Historic Preservation Commission approved it to be demolished. We were, I think, at a wedding reception, just mentioned, oh, we know which house you're talking about. You know, we, that's an old, old home. We'd love to not see it be destroyed. And Tom said, if you can figure a way to move, move it, you can have it. So that's where this started. The part we're proposing to move is what you see standing in front of it in the street, the, the big porch and the two front rooms, because everything behind that is a subsequent addition. <laughs> So the actual piece to be moved, including the porch, is 28 feet long and 20-something feet wide. It's not real big, real heavy. And so that's why the mover said once it's broken, the, the addition is torn away from it, it'd be very simple, just pick it up and move it. Now, I know uh, someone provided us with an ordinance that restricts the bridge and I think since that time everyone's been trying to figure a way to get it from Maple Street to Third Street and and I guess that's what we're asking tonight where I think I sent some stuff to David you got it trying to come up with a mechanism a legal mechanism that we can make this happen we've talked to the the movers they said going down Maple Street's not feasible for a couple of reasons one they're not sure of the roadbed and number two, the trees along the yards and on the creek side of the street are so, you know, the big old pretty trees would have to be butchered to move that house down there. He said, otherwise you'd have to take the whole roof off the house to go down there. Going up Bridge Street around the edge of Gin Shop Hill and around 82, the grade is so steep, they said that one bump, one shimmy and the whole house will rack and then it's just a load of lumber. So the only one that's flat enough, short enough, no big bumps or dips was coming over Bridge Street. And that's what we've been trying to 
work with everyone to figure a way to legally to have this one-time load cross. Now, the engineer, I think CJ provided everyone with a copy of his report. You probably crossed your eyes trying to make sense of it, but the part I could get out of it, the load limit on the bridge is three or four times what the house will weigh. And, they, and the way I understood it, he said that there's an inventory limit, which is what the bridge could regularly, could withstand regular traffic at that load. But then there's a maximum capacity that the bridge could withstand that something occasionally on it would not harm the bridge. It's just that repetitive, you know, like 18 wheelers hitting it all day that are bumping at the maximum load that would just start to destroy it. So we're talking about the one time bringing it down, turning, and the house movers, these people did old Alabama town. They did the recreated thing in Lumpkin, Georgia. I mean, they really know what they're talking about. They measured and walked all the way around. And as CJ said, they do it in 15 minutes. So that, that's what we're looking for. Have, have you had a chance to hey, talk to them about any of what? I know. I know. Uh, anyway, I, I sent David some stuff. We're just searching for a way. I know that y'all have to do it within the law. I understand that. Well, let us tell you where where we are at this point. The the request and the all the information that has been forwarded to us at various times has been corralled in one committee, and we are in the process of waiting for a a letter from that committee that we can send to you mm -hmm. to address the questions the committee has. Okay. And that's where the process is. I would anticipate, hopefully by the end of this week, a letter would be sent to you. Thank you. And that's... that would address, hopefully, the issues that we currently are aware of. All right. Well, and thank you we very can, much. That's. Then, that's all we're hoping for is some progress to try to do it. Because as, as she has pointed out to me, Dr. Miller, who uh, has shown no in inclination to do this, but he has every right to take a bulldozer over there tonight and get it on out of his way because that's been approved to remove it from his property. Um, plus, the weather we're having, I know it's not doing it any good. We want to get it over there, get it painted, and make sure the roof sound and all that and, and get going with it. So anyway, thank you. That that's good. We'll start news. the process. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything? Yeah, the only the last comment that that I wanted to make is that Pratt, Prattville's heritage has been slipping away with the loss of many of these buildings. As you know, Daniel Pratt's house is gone. The um the gin building the cotton mill buildings were burned. The superintendent's house at 4th and Court Street is gone. And this is our heritage. This is the history. These buildings, when, you, when they're in a historic district especially, people come to see that and they take that back with them, especially if they're fixed up. And we have every intention of making it absolutely adorable. And so we hope that you'll work with us. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, all you so very much. much. Is there anyone else present that would like to address the council? At this time, we will move into our closing comments. And at the conclusion of the closing comments, we will go into a very brief executive session. Mayor, do you have any comments? Councilor Jackson? Yes, sir. Um, I would like to thank the mayor, Chief Thompson, um, for the support that they've offered us down in the Spring Hill community. We've had a couple of community meetings back in December, and January, to address some concerns in that community. And uh, Chief Thompson's staff has done a very good job in addressing those issues. And I'm seeing some progress there and the, and the people and the, the citizens there seem to be pretty happy with what's going on down there so we're very uh so i'm very thankful for you guys support um our they've expressed some um 
happiness about our code inspector. No one really likes to see the code inspector show up, but um, they've even uh, commended him on his efforts and his patience with them in the community. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Councilor Brown? No, sir. Councilor Starnes? No, sir. Councilor Cables? No, sir. You sure? <laughs> Councilor Stritchett. <laughs> Councilor Boone. Okay. All right. Um, well, at this time, we are, um, Chair will entertain a motion to go into executive session. I anticipate uh, the session to be no longer than 20 minutes, at which time we will come back and uh, adjourn. Chair will entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. All opposed by like sign. Motion carries. Thank you.